Good evening. There were once two friends, and they meet. One was in a good mood, the other looked sad. So he asks the sad one, what are you so upset about? So he says, you know, three weeks ago, I finally got a settlement about that accident I had two years ago, and I got a half a million dollars, much more than I expected. So, so why are you sad? You know, two weeks ago, you know, Grandpa Joe died. He left me a hundred thousand dollars. And and so, so why are you sad? Last week, my uncle has no children. His person's money in a will. I got fifty thousand dollars. So why are you sad? This week. Nothing. <laughs> so, you know, we get blessings every last three weeks ago, two weeks ago, <laughs> last week. And we have expectations. We take life for granted. We take life for granted. We always take life for granted. And a Yid, a Jew, who believes in Hashem, should take nothing for granted. And that's much of the theme of our tefillahs and of our brachas, our prayers. It's all about the recognition that everything is from Hashem. And not that we have to expect it because we earned it, it's recounting on Hashem for His blessings and recognizing that. And that brings us to the ninth chapter of Kuntis and Yonah Shel Teres Chassidus. The Rebbe in this work wants to show how Chassidus affects all of Torah and through Torah all of the world. The world. And there are different levels in Torah, the four levels of Torah, Pshat, Remesh, Jerusalem, which we touched upon about and which we're going to speak and delve into deeper. All of these are affected and illuminated through Chassidus. The Rebbe doesn't want to speak in general terms. What the Rebbe is going to do now is take one prayer. A universal prayer, Ashkenazim, Sfardim, uh, Chassidim, not Chassidim, everyone says, Moida'ani. The first prayer we say in the morning, before we get out of bed, before we wash Negel That That prayer, the Rebbe is going to say how it's on each level of Torah. So we're going to have four explanations of that how it's the fifth explanation that is a Hasidus, and how the Hasidic inside, insight, which is an, its own independent insight and understanding of this verse, how that understanding and interpretation of that verse gives insight into the Pshat, into the Halacha, into the Remit, and into the Gabola. And that's what the next few chapters are about. <coughs> and the Rebbe says, in, um, if you're following on page 55, we're going to start there. This, the reason he chose this prayer, the prayer of thanksgiving, which a, a, a Jew says the first thing in the morning, when he wakes up, why did he chose this prayer? There are so many verses in Torah, Nevi'im, and Ksuvim, Psalms, which is part of Ksuvim. Why did he cho choose this verse? And in every verse in Torah, there are so many meanings. 
and so many levels to understand just by following the commentator commentaries on all of Tanakh and what the Kabbalah writes on most of the verses in Tanakh and Chassidus writes but he chose Moed Ani for a reason <coughs> so on page 55 in the English translated uh, book he gives, makes three points which I'm going to read from the text and elaborate on Aleph why that he chose Moida'ani. So Moida'ani is a line. Moida'ani lefanecha, I thank you. A yid opens his eyes, he doesn't go out of his bed, and right away he says, Moida'ani lefanecha. I thank you, Hashem. I say thanksgiving lefanecha before you, Hashem. Shechzar tabinishmasi, that you return my soul to me. Because when we're asleep, we lose consciousness. And the Gemara and the Kabbalah says that was cert- to a certain degree, our soul uh, leaves us. So that I'm giving thanksgiving to Hashem when I wake up and I become conscious. I'm thanking you, Hashem, for giving my neshama, restoring my soul back to me. That's the prayer. And why did he choose this? So three points. Aleph. Since a person says this prayer immediately upon awakening, so as soon as he gets up, as soon as his day starts, he says this prayer. And through that he remembers that Hashem's presence is before him. And he'll get out of bed. He'll get out of bed. So this is the beginning. And the foundation of the rest of the day. The 613 mitzvahs that are in the Torah. There are customs. There's, there's, there's the institution of of the Talmud, the laws of the Talmud, with the Rabbonon, the Rabbonon, the whole day, how to conduct yourself in business, character, how to, how to get along with people, the whole day in all aspects, how does it start? What's the first significant thing that he does? Thank you Hashem for restoring my soul. And since this is the beginning, it's therefore also the foundation. So it's for the day, and for the life. What his life is going to be. All of his life experiences during that day starts with Moedahani. So it sets the tone for the day. So that's why this, this was instituted. This custom, it's not a law, but this custom, I'm going to elaborate on it later on. This custom was instituted because we have to set the tone for the day. And how do we set the tone for the day? The direction that the day should go. And all experiences that he's going to do today, the, the holy experiences, and also what you would call the secular experiences, the everyday experiences, it starts with Moida'ani. So we really have to think about in depth and analyze Moida'ani and what the Rebbe is going to take everything, all four levels of Torah understanding, Pshat, Remesh, Dr, Said, and what Hasidus adds, fifth interpretation. Now the Hasidic interpretation is going to shed light and, and depth to all the others. And when we have such a rich understanding of all aspects of that line and of that custom to say the Moida'ani, to say thank you Hashem first thing in the morning, that is really a fundamental prayer because number one it sets the tone for the whole day and everything that's going to come its way that day Beis why we say Maida'ani the meaning of Maida'ani the first point that we said is when now we're going to speak about why 
When do you say more than the time, As soon as you open your eyes. And if what, the way you start, that's the way it goes. The way you wind up, that's where the machine is going to go. You set the, you set the machine, it's going to go that direction. Now, why? Why is, is Moed Ani so important? And then we have to understand the meaning. Moed Ani is about the awareness of God's presence in the, as soon as we open our eyes and have that with us all day. Beis, Toichen Amirazu, Shahu, the meaning and the content of this of this prayer, of this line, is to think about and meditate. Miyad Lifnei Hu Shaykhev. He's still in bed. He's still in his pajamas. He didn't wash his hands. He can't make a bracha. He says, Moidani, because then he remembers, I open my eyes, I'm still lying the way I sleep. He is in the presence of Hashem. He is in the presence of the King of all kings. Hashem fills heaven and earth. So Hashem is in his bedroom. And Hashem is in front of him, no matter what he looks like, <laughs> in bed. Right there. He didn't go to the mikveh. He didn't wash negavasa. He's there. And there, where he is, no matter how he is or where he is, he has to remember Hashem's presence is with him. Now, if right there, the first thing in the morning, while he's still in bed, he's still in whatever his condition is from the, from the night, Hashem is there. So no matter where he's going to be the rest of the day, no matter what he's going to do the rest of the day, in shul and out of shul and in between and whatever, and whatever not necessarily is, is in a complimentary way, he remembers Hashem's presence is with him. Because even if he's, so to say, tame, because before you wash your hands in the morning, you are tame. Tame is powerful words, it's impure. It's even worse than, less than impure. It could be uh, unholy, the opposite of holy. You open your eyes, you have consciousness. Hashem's a friend. So the rest of the day, that, that is... That is life, to remember in every situation, in every condition, Hashem's presence in all its glory, the King of all kings, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One. This is a, the great principle in the Torah. And this is the quality for the righteous that go are always before Hashem. The verse says, David HaMelech said, Shivisi Hashem, I place Hashem before me always, in front of me always. A person who places Hashem in front of him always, he has blessing with him, he has nothing to fear, there's always hope, and he will be blessed. That's the way all of, the, all of his day should go. So this is already getting into, not only is it the beginning, but this is the purpose and the meaning of the whole day. Is the, is the purpose of the whole day. Is the meaning of, his, of what, what his day is going to be like. Is the depth of the life of that day. So that's point number two. Point number three, Gimel. Call ha niskil il hanal. Everything that was mentioned before, that it's the get go, and two, it's, it's what is necessary all day, the remembering the press of Shem in all conditions, and whatever he does that day, that also 
represents the awakening. He wakes up in the morning. So there's, is he, is he a new person? Yes, it's a new day. There's a verse that says that a new day is, is new. Every morning is like a new day, a new world. <coughs> but he has a nose. When he was asleep, he had a nose. He had two eyes. He had hands. He had feet. Baruch Hashem. He had everything was there. So his body was there. His consciousness was not there to a great degree. I mean, people dream and something's going on in the head during sleep. That's another discussion, what sleep is. But, but what happened? He awoke. He awoke and became aware. So this prayer is the bridge and the passing from a state of dormant and the Gemara calls it like dead partial death and awakening going from being asleep unaware, unconscious and becoming conscious and aware and awakening that is what all of life is about. Kol hanal avoides adam lekoyin has the idea hakdomas neir mishinasi mahav behav le haoynam. What is life? It's a line really you find it borrowed from Rambam. We are asleep with the nonsense of the world. Kolushen haRambam haYedua. So words in the Rambam and the laws of Rosh Hashanah it says people are asleep with the Havle Ha'olam meaninglessness of the world of worldliness. I see he writes vanities, Hevel uh, translators like to say Hevel is vanity. I don't know what vanity means. I mean, vanity actually means pride. But the commentators on Kehelis, where this word comes from, that the world is just Hevel, Hevel, Havoli. Hevel is really breath, hot air. And the wise Solomon, King Shlem HaMelech, said that all of the pursuits that people are chasing after, it's just hot air. <coughs> it's hot air. In the winter, when you breathe hot air, so what do you see? Stuff. <laughs> it's, you see something. But really it's nothing. It's just hot air. It's hot air. It's meaninglessness. But to us, it seems like very important, very significant. The Rebbe Rashab once said a line, he says, it's like a bubble. You know, kids play with bubbles. They have today, you can make these big, large bubbles. They're bubble makers, they can make a bubble that's uh, six feet wide, four feet wide, three feet wide. So the Rebbe Hashab says, an animal or a dog has a big bubble coming at it, he's going to run away. It's big. It's big. The Rebbe Hashab says, clipper is just a bubble. It looks big, but it's empty. It's hot air. In, in English, we say, oh, he's full of hot air. Right? It's an election year, so we know exactly what that means. <laughs> Hot air. He's saying things, giving long speeches, a lot of fancy words, words, nine-letter words, this, that, that, that. And we say, it's just hot air. Why? Because he's just breathing. He's putting words to it, fancy words, promises, election promise, election year promises. And what do we say? It's hot air. That's all it is. It's nothing. It's like a balloon. And we need an awakening. That, that's what the Ramam says. We're asleep. Shina into Havle Into the meaninglessness of worldliness. 
There's worldliness. This is important. That is important. And all that. And we're asleep. Why we're we asleep? Because we don't have an awareness. We need an awakening. You know, sometimes you need some a, a tragedy. Chaz or Shalom. Then you say, "Whoa, I, I got to get involved." With my, my, something happened in my family. Chaz or Shalom. So you get busy. With, you have time for everything. You drop everything, and now it's important. Things that are important take priority when we have an awakening. So really, we're so busy with stuff day and night, we need an awakening. So what the Rebbe is saying over here is, in the morning, we wake up, right? So what does wake up mean? It means that we just we opened our eyes and we, and, we, and we see if it's daylight or not daylight or if it's raining outside or not. That's not awakening. Awakening is, a real awakening is, I have an awakening that Hashem's presence is in front of me. And I say, thank you, Hashem, for restoring life to me. That's what it's all about. You know, there's a, there's a saying uh, when they want to make fun of uh, people who are asleep. So, the saying goes, Why are you alive? How, and how are you al alive? What's life? What's being alive? So, one response is, He's alive because he wasn't hit by a truck. Is that, is that your definition of life? <laughs> He's alive because he did, wasn't hit by a truck. <coughs> so what's life? He wasn't hit by a truck. So what's life? You have to have an awakening. So moidani is the time when you awake physically and you're saying like the, 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 it's in a different context they say you know he's woke woke so, they, 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 this is, so there's the Jewish woke are you aware are you aware <coughs> are you woke <laughs> that Hashem's in front of you that he gave you a life and now what are you going to do with the rest of the day what are you going to do with the rest of the day Oh, my head, they had so many stuff with me. Well, you know what? When you woke and you're still tummy, and you're still impure, you're still in bread, and you're in whatever condition you are, when you wake up, you don't put your pants on, and Hashem is in front of you. And there and then, you can't even say a bracha. You're not allowed to say a bracha. You're not allowed to say Hashem's name. That means woke. That's the awakening. So that's why, because this is such a fundamental prayer, it's a one-line prayer that's so uh, uh, fundamental and all-encompassing and so deep and so important, that it says, okay, let's take that line, we're going to analyze it, in Pshat Remesh Drush Said. And now, <coughs> in parentheses, he says something which I found very interesting. You know, in the in the Siddur, we say the line, Moida ani lefanecha, mele chai v'kayim, thank you, Hashem. I'm saying thank you before you, who has, has restored my soul to me. Bechemla, uh, with, with mercy. And then, uh, after the word chemla, in the Siddur was printed a period, a dot. Rabba munasecha. Rabban Lasecha is your, your faith, our trust in you is immense. Rabban Lasecha. <clears throat> um, so there's a Vart um, that was asked, the Rebbe Rashab. He said, as a child, he asked, the question was raised what's the point of that dot? 
You can read it as one sentence without a dot. A period means you stop. So it doesn't have to be there. Is it self-understood? What's the point? Apparently it could be self-understood. Rabba Munasecha, we're saying to Hashem, first of all, thank you for restoring my soul in great mercy, meaning even if I deserve it or not. And Rabba Munasecha, it is great our trust in you, <coughs> our faith in you. What well, do you need a dot over there? We understand the whole context. So, the explanation was that that dot is the point of beginning of all beginnings. The point is usually the center in, in geometry. We're taught the point is the center and everything comes from that. The point is this is Moida'ani, the beginning of the day, that point of faith. And from that point, we have to spread it out for the rest of the day. When he was a child, he explained that dot, which is really a, apparently a period, even though in Hebrew, you know, the period, the comma wasn't really used, but when they printed, in Europe, they started using the dot as a period. That dot, or the point, the center, that's in the Moida'ani. You have to spread it out for the rest of the day. So, he said this, so the Hasidic, the, this explanation over here, about the dot is really about really what the theme is all about. The theme of Moida'ani is supposed to take you throughout the day. And these were the three points he said before. It starts the day, it's the foundation of the day, it's the consciousness, the awareness. We have to have that awareness all day, and it helps us to be woke in the Jewish sense. Now, we're going to start chapter 10. And over here, uh, at least to go into the, the pshat of Moida'ani. As we said before, where there's the pshat of Moida'ani. So turn to chapter 10. What is the first understanding, interpretation of what Moida'ani is? So we touched it before. But we're going to go into analyze it, but on the level of pshat, not Kabbalah, not what you call halacha, pshat. So what is it? It's a prayer of thanksgiving. We're on page 57. It's first of all a prayer of thanksgiving. And let's understand the, this, the, the, this prayer of thanksgiving. What are we thanking? Our soul was restored. We were not conscious. We were not conscious, conscious in, in as well as sleep. And now our seichel is with us. Our mind is open. We're refreshed. And we say, Hashem, you restored our soul. Quote, unquote. So we're thanking Moida. What's the word Moida? Like in modern Hebrew, Toda Rabbah. We're thanking. That's the meaning. It always was the Hebrew word. Now, the Rebbe touches here a point. He says, wait a minute. There is another prayer that we say thanking Hashem, which is in the Siddur, which you're going to be saying later anyway. That is a prayer that is in the Gemara. And that, which was instituted by our early sages as part of the Siddur. And yet, we said, we're not waiting for that. We're not waiting for that. You're going to be covered anyways later. And properly, because you're going to say it, it's more elaborate, it's more detailed, and you're saying with Hashem's name after you wash Negelvasa, a real prayer. 
Because Moida Ani, you're not saying Hashem's name. You're still Tomei. You're still in Wash Negevasa. You're not so pure. Pure. So what's, so what's the point of saying it, so to say, like a half a prayer, so to say? Wait till you do it properly, the way it was instituted originally. We're going to do a proper bracha, the bracha, which is in the sinner. This, uh, that we say, Alakai, we say Hashem's name, God. We call God. When we say, Moidani, we say, Moidani lefonecha, I'm saying thank you before you. We don't say who, because we're not going to say Hashem's name. Who? The anonymous one. Shechzarte bin who gave me back, my, who restored my soul. Compare that to the, to the whole paragraph. Alakai neshama, shenasate bi tohiri. The neshama is pure. All the levels of neshama, shechzat min nishmasi, and we say nishmasi, and we make barachat Hashem. So you're saying a proper prayer. So why do we have to say it as soon as you wake up? You also have to say moidani. So this same prayer, <coughs> we say it twice. We say it first when we wake up, and which was inserted, so to say, in Jewish custom and culture. And then we wake up, and we wash Negevaser, we get dressed, and then we say, kind of Shama, Shansat with a proper bracha. Why do we have to do it twice? It's ki hachiyuv lahoydes alachzor salashama miyad kishnei mishnase. Because there's a dilemma here. The real obligation starts as soon as you open your eyes. Because you got your life back. You got your life back. And, but you can't say Hashem's name. So what do you do? As soon as you get your life back, you should make a bracha. Because it's like all brachas. What's, what are brachas? Brachas is, uh, it was instituted. So the Gemara says, you can't have, you can't use or take pleasure or benefit from this world without saying a bracha, without saying what they call a blessing. So the Gemara says, why? Because it doesn't belong to you. Hashem, the whole world belongs to Hashem. In fact, the Gemara says, if someone goes to the temple, to the Beis HaMikdash, and he, there's a goat there that was, was supposed to be for a carbon, for an offering, and he takes it himself. Not only is he stealing, because it belongs to Hashem's temple, to the Beis HaMikdash, to, he, to Kodesh, to Hegdash, but he's also stealing from Hashem. He's using what is holy and, make, and is for his own purposes. He has, and in addition to returning the stolen object, which is all laws of theft and robbery, he has to bring a sin offering, a special asham offering, because it's not only <coughs> is he a thief, but he's also desecrating the holy. The whole world is Hashem's temple. The whole world is Hashem's temple. The whole world is Kaidish, is Hegdish. So the Gemara says if somebody takes an apple, he planted the apple, it's his tree, but it's Hashem's world. Hashem made the apple grow. Maybe he paid for the apple, but you paid the one who delivered it. But it's still Hashem's apple. The whole world is Hashem's temple. You can't use <laughs> temple products, first of all, without getting permission, but it doesn't belong to you, it belongs to Hashem. Second of all, it's holy. 
It's part of the temple structure, property. It's temple property. It's hectic property. And if you use it without permission, the Gemara says it's meila. Meila is the law prohibiting having benefit from temp of uh, items that belong to the temple. Mm-hmm. You have to bring the asha meila. We say it in the morning. And how do you, so to say, take off the hold that's on worldly, on worldly pleasures? You make a bracha. So they told us, you want to release the hold? You want to release the hegdish from it? Make a bracha. When you make a bracha, that's the law Hashem says. If you make a bracha, you recognize that it belongs to me. You say, thank Hashem for the apple, for the fruit, mm-hmm. for the fragrance. You're not allowed to smell a flower before making a bracha for food. So all worldly pleasures, we make a bracha, and that gives us permission. And now, enjoy. Hashem says, you're my guest in my temple. So, if for an apple, I can't eat it without first recognizing that it's Hashem's apple, and then I have permission to benefit from it. An apple. What's an apple? I'm going to taste it. I have the pleasure of, t- of tasting an apple, which tastes good, hopefully. And I'm going to get the nutri- nutrition from the apple, the, the other, other nutritional benefits from eating an apple. It's one ple- pleasure. It's one specific pleasure of the mouth and nutritious pl- uh, benefit. So that's, that needs a bracha. So then what about life? I wake up, my soul is restored to me. My soul is restored to me, that's all of a life. It's an all-inclusive benefit I'm getting. Wow. I'm inhaling, I'm exhaling, I'm thinking, I'm walking, I'm moving. All my pleasures. I'm now enabled to enjoy all physical pleasures. I'm going to have my feelings, the good feelings that I have uh, feelings of love, feelings of energy, feelings of drive, feelings of success. It comes first. First, you got to give life. Fifth, the re- you know, recharge the batteries. Hashem gives us, empowers us. And now, what do you do when you recharge the phone? So your phone could be served as, <laughs> as making phone calls and checking the news and checking the weather. And uh, asking questions of uh, Alexa or whatever you have on your on your phone on your smartphone, <laughs> but first you got to recharge the batteries. Then you can take pictures, you can take movies, you can take recording, you can watch stuff, you can see stuff, you can send stuff. You, the whole world is in front of you. The whole world is in front of you. You're connected with the whole world. I have a WhatsApp group, Rabboni Chabad. So I was in a store yesterday, and I had this cod liver, cod, uh, cod, cod liver. And I had a, I had a sent some kind of a rabbi supervising it. I didn't recognize it from Europe. I put it into Rabbani Chabad. I put it in. On the Rabbani Chabad WhatsApp group, you have about 60 rabbis from all over the world. The person from Europe tells me, oh, this is not a real, it's not a real, <laughs> not a real ashgocha. This one, that one. Bottom line. The whole world is in front of you. But how do you get to that? You got to recharge the batteries. You wake up in the morning, we're refreshed. Our batteries are recharged. Shouldn't we make a bracha? If before I take a bite in an apple, I have to make a bracha, I have to thank Hashem and recognize Hashem. So certainly, when my consciousness comes back to me, Shechzarta bin Ishmasi, you restored my soul, which is the energy that allows me to enjoy the pleasures of the body and allows me to think and allows me to understand and allows me to fe- have my feelings all of that certainly have to uh, uh, make a bracha the kolels is kol hanoa saprati shiba hanoa shi hanoa yoysa gdele kolels is kol hanoa saprati shiba it's all inclusive all pleasures 
So we ask the question, why not wait for later? Why not wait until you wash Negevasi, you open a cinder, and you say, the proper and complete bracha calling, starting with Hashem, saying one of the names of Hashem, calling Hashem's name, Elokai. And making the bracha, Barachat Hashem, Machzen Shabbos. Saying a proper bracha. You can't wait. Because a bracha you have to make close and immediately when you haven't benefited. You can't eat an apple and then think of, oh, okay, what kind of bracha? Before you eat the apple, you have to make a bracha. And a footnote, Samach Hay, in the Hebrew, he says, normally we make a bracha before we eat. So when we wake up and again our consciousness, so the life is given to us. Here you can't make the bracha before you get your life, before the awakening. We're saying that the biggest pleasure we have is the awakening. That our neshama is restored. So really you should make the bracha, technically, before your neshama is restored. And then, oh, neshama is restored. He will make the bracha after. So, so he says in the footnote, you can't make the bracha before because you have, don't have the consciousness. So you have to do it immediately after. You can't make the bracha before you had this, this benefit, before you got this energy. <clears throat> so then immediately when you wake, you have to make the bracha. That answers the question, why, why can't you wait? Because it's a bracha. When do you find like that, similar? When, you, when a person makes a bracha, today it applies only to women. The bracha al hatvila. Men go to mikvah, they're not, they don't have a, a mitzvah. They don't have a, a, a real, certainly a Torah relation to the mikvah. Women do. A woman, after her period, and she goes through the seven clean days, so she goes to mikvah and she makes a bracha. So in the she should make the bracha before she immerses in the mikvah. I know that she first dips into the mikveh once and then she makes the bracha, the customs then she make, then, uh, then she dips again after the bracha. <laughs> to fulfill that idea, you make, a, you make the bracha before you do a mitzvah. We put on tefillin, we make a bracha before we put on tefillin. We eat matzah, we make a bracha before we eat matzah. Every mitzvah you do, you, put, you, you, put the, you make the bracha before you do the mitzvah. You put on a talus, make the bracha before you wrap yourself in the talus. It's lesatev batzitzis. And then we wrap ourselves. We do the wrap. So therefore, you make the bracha before. So how come by, by tefillah or not? The afshi yefshu levarach oiv v'las yasi kekata gav v'lechazi. The Gemara says before you, you can't make the bracha before you immerse yourself in the mikvah. Technically, arguably, you could have said, you know, you wear a robe, make the bracha, and then go into the mikvah. So you, you don't do that. Why? <coughs> because you're not pure yet. Nevertheless, if you can't do it before, at least do it immediately after. And the money doesn't push the bracha for mikvah afterwards. They make the bracha as soon as you, you, you come up from the dip. Same thing is with Alatil uh, Yadai when we wash our hands. The Gemara uses the example also for, for Tvila, mainly by Tvila. Because we don't make the bracha Alatil Yadai until we wash our hands. So, yes. We, we make it before we complete, um, you know, uh, wipe, uh, you know, doing it, uh, holding it and rubbing it in the water. But al him, why do we do it immediately after? Because you have to make the bracha immediately connected to doing the mitzvah. So if you can't do it before, you do it immediately after. So therefore the bracha cannot wait for later. So therefore, since you're having the pleasure, and it's all inclusive pleasure, so if an apple you have to make before, which is just one pleasure, so then waking up, which Hashem is granting us the, 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 the store, your, our soul, for sure you have to make it right away. You can't make the bracha before you wash your hands. Because Alakai Neshama says, 
has the name of Hashem in it. So you can't say the original bracha, which is the text instituted by our sages, by the early sages who wrote the Siddur. You can't, you can't say it then, because your hands are not clean, and you're not clean. So therefore, but I have to do something, I have to thank Hashem, I have to make some kind of a bracha. So therefore we say this line, Moidahani. So therefore he said to Moedani, and then he continues, nevertheless, even though you did cover it as soon as you woke up, so why do you have to say it again by the, by, by, uh, in the, from a Siddur? That's because on one hand you're, you're covering yourself by saying the Moedani prayer, even in the state of impurity with the before Nekel Vasar, before you wash your hands, because that's when real timing is immediately. But since you didn't say Hashem's name, so therefore you say it again after you wash Nekel you open a Siddur, and you say, Al kind of satabi you say the whole elaborate bracha. So there you say it later, Kinois of Lazar, Shabrichas, Al kind of Shem, Yesh, Al Kama, Prab, Shin, Moidaani, Oizis, Moidaani, Embo, Haskar, Sashem. The whole bracha, Shem, Shem, O Malchus, uh, in the bracha. If it doesn't have Hashem's name, it's not considered quote unquote a bracha. It's not, it's not so to say, a technically an, a, a legit bracha completely. So, on one hand, we want to recognize our appreciation and make in lieu of a bracha. So, we say that prayer that could be said even when someone is in an impure state. So, that is the, the pshat meaning of the Moidani. And we're going to stop here before we go into the other Rem as Drish side meaning of Moedani. And the bottom line we get from all of this is how really Moedani, which seems to be like, so to say, how, how important is Moedani already? Hey, Moedani. Some people say, nah, I'll, I'll, I'll say my prayers in bed. I have to say my prayer before I, I can see them even before they get out of it. Before the, you're supposed to say before you get out of bed. Before you wash Negevasa. And even the Hasidim wash Negevasa by the side of their bed. They have a pen with a, with a cup to wash Negevasa. Before the side of their bed. See, so you, you can stay in bed and wash Negevasa. No. Before you move. Before you say anything. First thing you're supposed to say, Moedani. And <coughs> this is emphasized by the Rebbes. It also shows you something about Jewish faith. No matter what condition you are, no matter what, what you look like, no matter what, even though you're Tomei, you can't even say a bracha. You didn't even wash Negel Vasa, you still have Tuma on you, have impurity on you. The Moida'ani of a Yid is the essence of a Yid. It's the quintessential recognition. Hashem, you restored me, I'm yours. And the rest of the day goes with that. It has to go with that. That's the same, that's a simple plan of Moedani. And then we're going to go into Kabbalah of Moedani. And the halachas that we learn from Moedani. And how it's connected with Tchiyas Mashiach's times, Tchiyas Amazing. And then the Hasidic Taich. And then we're going to put it all together. So Moedani is a real big thing. And we should... Uh, we should really take to heart and to really start the day and to be woke with the Jewish woke of Moida Ani. Good night.